everyone and welcome to part three of the learning python series in this episode we're going to be talking about variables and by the end of it i hope you're going to know what a variable is how to work and create variables along with some best practices for working with variables in python so what is a variable well a variable is something that we can create and we can name and then we can assign a value to it and then we can use that variable throughout our code so let's jump straight into some examples so here I've got our terminal open. I'm going to go ahead and use the touch command and create a new file called variables.py. Go ahead and create that. And I'm going to open up our Visual Studio Code editor with code followed by a dot. And that's going to open up VS Code in the current directory. So here we are in our variables.py file. So let's get started. So creating variables and assigning values to variables. How do we do it? So I'll try and comment as much as I can. So if you want to follow along and comment, you can look back on it for reference in the future. So let's create a variable and we're going to call it language. So we're going to give it a variable name of language. And then we assign a value to it using the equals operator followed by our value. So I'm going to give it a value of Python. So here we've created a variable. The variable name is language and the value is Python. And now we can use this variable throughout our code and it's going to have this value. And this is a string. We've created a string here. But obviously variables aren't limited to strings. We can assign any kind of value or object to a variable. For example, we could do an integer, and an integer is a whole number. So we could do something like my age equals 30. We can work with floating point numbers or decimal numbers. So let's go ahead and float. We can do pi equals 3.141, blah, blah, blah. I'm not gonna type them all out. So a floating point value is a decimal number. We can store any kind of data container as a variable. So for example, let's create a list. I'm going to create a list called names and we'll give it some names. So Bob, Tim and Sarah. Now we haven't covered any type of uh, data container in Python yet, but we will do in the future. And it's just a way to store multiple values in a list and then we're assigning that to the variable of names we can create dictionaries and assign them to variables so let's create a dictionary called user and we'll give it some values so username let's just do mike password is pizza. So again, I'm not going to go into the details of what dictionary is, just know it's a container type for storing keys and values. And again, we've assigned that dictionary to a variable which we've called user. We can assign booleans to variables. Again, we will be covering booleans, so awesome equals true. Course it is. So as you can see, we can create variables and assign them all kinds of different values. And it's not limited to just the values here. Any kind of value or object you can assign to a variable. And we'll be covering more of these different types of values and objects in Python throughout this series. So we can reuse variables and that's probably what makes them so powerful and useful. So reusing variables. So let's create a new variable here. I'm gonna call it kick drum. I'm gonna give it a value of boom. So let's go ahead and reuse this kick drum variable. I'm gonna use the print function and followed by the parentheses. I'm gonna copy kick drum and I'm going to paste it in there to the print function. Now the print function is a standard function that comes with Python and it allows us to 
pass in values which then get printed out to our terminal. So I'm going to go ahead and copy that and paste it five times. So what do you think is going to happen when we run this file? Let's go ahead and do so. So Python followed by the file name variables.py. You can see here we get boom, 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 boom. So we're reusing our variable throughout our code. So another thing we can do is multiple assignments. So you've seen we've been creating variables and assigning them values all on separate lines, which normally makes sense. Another thing we can do is we can create multiple variables on the same line and assign them values all on the same line. So let's go ahead and name, comma, gender, comma, age equals, use my name, feel free to use your own, gender, I am male, and my age is 30. So we've created three new variables and given them all values all on the same line. And we use one equals operator in between the variable names and their corresponding values. So if we go ahead and print name, gender and age, let's run our code. You can see that we get Julian, male and 30. Now, if you're just getting started, it's probably better and more, it's recommended to define and create your variables all on separate lines, just for readability. But in the future, there will be cases when you need to assign multiple variables all on the same line. And that's going to be more around functions and other things which we will be exploring throughout this series. So we can reassign variable values. So variable reassignment. So let's go ahead and create a new variable. I'm going to call it quantity and give it a value of 100. Let's go ahead and print quantity. And I'm going to copy this down once and twice. Let's go ahead and change this value to 500. And let's go ahead and change this third value to a string of 100,000. Go ahead and save. So just a quick uh, thought experiment. What do you think is going to happen when we run this file? Is Are these all going to print 100? Are they all going to print 500? Or are they all going to print 100,000? Or are they all going to print different values? Well, let's go ahead and run it, and then we will talk through what's happening. So here we get 100, we get 500, and then we get 100,000. And the reason for why this is happening is because Python works by reading your code from top to bottom. So it's going to start at the very top, and it's going to see whatever code you've written, and then it's going to execute that code as it sees it. So from top to bottom, it's going to see whatever you've written and follow your exact instructions. So if we work from top to bottom here, we created a variable called quantity and given it a value of 100. We're then telling Python to print whatever value is currently at quantity. In this case, it's 100. It's then going to move to line 37 here, and it's going to see quantity again. And it's going to see it's got a different value. And what it's going to do is just going to reassign the value for the quantity variable as 500 and then print quantity. And because we've reassigned it, it's going to print 500. Then it's going to do the same thing again once it gets here to line 40. It's going to see quantity again and it's going to see a different value. And it's going to go ahead and reassign that value to the variable and go ahead and print whatever value is currently at that variable. So it's important to remember Python works from top to bottom and it's just going to execute whatever it finds in its path. So that's how we reassign the values of variables. But creating variables isn't just, uh, it's, it, we've been throughout this video, we've been just creating a new variable name and then giving it a new value. 
but there's another way that we can give a uh, value to a variable. So let's go ahead and create a new uh, variable here. I'm just going to call it name. Even though we've done that, we're just going to go ahead and reassign it, as you've just seen. So we'll give this a new value of Guido, who's a creator of Python. And then we'll create a new variable here called Guido, and we'll give it the value of name. And then we'll go ahead and print Guido. So create a new variable with the value of Guido. We're then creating a new variable here called Guido, and then we're giving it the value of whatever we've stored in our name variable. So if we go ahead and print this or run the code, you can see we get Guido. So you don't have to just create a brand new value every time you want to um, create a new variable. You can reuse values because they are just stored like the name variable here just is a representation of the value Guido. So that's a good way to think about it. We can also unpack variables. So let's create a new comment. Now I probably should have pointed out that this is a comment and it starts by using the hash symbol followed by your comment. And Python will just see this as a comment and it will completely ignore it. So Comments are a great way to uh, give yourself a reference. So variable unpacking. Let's create a new variable here and we'll call it, um, we'll just call it awesome. It's really hard to think of variable names on the spot. So let's go ahead and we're gonna create a tuple, which is a, another just data container in Python that we can use to group uh, values together. So let's create a couple of values in our container, foobar and baz. And then let's create three more variables, foo, bar, and baz. And then what I'm gonna do is assign them the value of awesome. And then we'll go ahead and print out foo, bar, and baz. So let's go ahead and run this. I'm gonna clear the console and Python variables.py and we get foo, bar, and bats. So let's quickly talk about what we're doing here. So we've created this new variable called awesome and we've given it the value of a tuple, which again, we will be covering tuples very shortly, um, but it's just a way to group values together. And we've uh, given this tuple three values here, foo, bar, and bats. We're then creating three more variables all on the same line, and then we're passing it the value of awesome. Now Python's Python's smart. It's gonna see this and it's gonna think, okay, we've got this variable here called awesome, which has got three values here in a tuple or in a, in a data container containing three values. It will then see, oh, you're trying to create three new variables here and you're trying to give it the value of awesome. Well, hang on. I know that awesome has got three values. So how about I just unpack whatever's in awesome and then assign these variables with their corresponding values. So that's how variable unpacking works. And this doesn't have to be a tuple. We could do a list. We go ahead and rerun that. We get the same output. We could do a set. Again, we will be covering these container types very soon. And again, we get the same value. So really, we're just unpacking any kind of container type into their own separate variables. The next thing we are gonna cover is variable naming. So this is important. So throughout this guide, you've seen us create variables with lowercase letters and words separated with underscores. Now this is known as snake case. And um, it's really the kind of de facto recommended way to name it variables in Python. So we'll just create another one here. Um, now in fact, I think what we'll do is we'll first talk about um, a couple of things that you cannot do when it comes to naming variables. So variables must start with a uh, letter or an underscore. 
nothing else. Can't start with a number, can't start with any symbols. And in fact, you can't use non-alphanumeric characters when it comes to creating variable names. So let's create a new variable here or try and create one called sweets with a five. And we'll just give it the value of yum. And you can see Visual Studio Code has highlighted this in red because it's a, it's a warning here that this isn't going to work. And if we try and run our file, we get a syntax error. And we haven't covered errors yet, but they're just ways of Python letting us know that something in our code isn't right. It's not working or it's not allowed. And then we get a little pointer here to sweets saying invalid syntax. And the syntax is just the convention of how a language is written. So that's not allowed. Instead, we should name it something like, or we could do underscore 5-W-E-E-T-S equals yum. But that's terrible. That's not a good way to name a variable. So let's just change it to sweet equals yum. And let's go ahead and comment that out. Run that again, no errors. So another thing, you cannot use non-alphanumeric characters. So if we try to create a variable called music-style equals house, we try and run this, we get an error because the dash here is not a non-alphanumeric character. In fact, the this dash symbol is used in Python in the uh, in math. So we cannot use that. So instead, we should swap that out for an underscore. Run that again, and we get no errors. Again, non-alphanumeric non characters like, I mean, all of these, for example, are um, non-alphanumeric. So you cannot use anything like this when it comes to naming your variables. So just stick to letters if you need to use numbers then you can just make sure they're not at the start of the variable name and separate your words with underscores and you will be in good stead um, variables are also case sensitive meaning um, lang language is equal to python or not is equal to is python if we then created another variable below it with sorry i keep hitting the caps button language equals to python and then all uppercase language equals python these are all different variables so variables are case sensitive there's also um reserved words that you cannot use to name your variables for example class is a python reserved word so if we try and save and run you can see we get a syntax error and that's because class is a special reserved python word that is used for creating a class which we'll be covering later in the series again something like def which is also a reserved word let's comment out class try and run that again we get an error because def is a reserved word or a special python keyword so you cannot use those so some of the naming best practices so you've already seen and we've already discussed that using uh, just lowercase letters and words separated by underscores is going to be the best way for you to name your variable names. Um, but also, you know, for example, some kind of variable equals, I don't know, hello. You can see here, that's not really very readable. So you want to keep things readable and that's why we use the lowercase letters and underscores. So some kind of Goodness me, some kind of variable is hello. You can see that immediately this is a lot more readable. Uh, be descriptive as well. 
it's not very useful creating a variable like this, just with a variable name of x, because you might understand or think, yeah, that's fine, I know what that is at the time of writing your code, but I can almost guarantee that going forward, if you try and revisit your code uh, in the future, you're gonna think, what is x, what does it mean? You know, you need to give some kind of context to your variable, so, for example, create a new variable called secret key, give it a value. We know that whatever value is here is going to be our secret key. So be descriptive. Um, if you have a variable that you don't want the value to be changed, or it's a constant value, something like a database password, you can see here I've uh, done it all in caps. Let's just do some random string there. Now this isn't going to be enforced and of course you can go ahead and change whatever value is here at database password but it's just a best practice to name any variables that should have a constant value that should not really be changed is to use uppercase and again separated with an underscore so constants. So some of the other naming conventions. Uh, you may see variables in Python using what's called camel case. So an example of camel case would be this capital I S, capital S for sum, capital C for camel, and capital C for case. Give that a value of camel case. So camel case is all words capitalized apart from the first. And you, you, you might come across that in some older Python. Uh, another kind of typing convention is known as Pascal case or Studley caps. And that looks a bit like uh, this is my class. So all words capitalized. And you will see this in uh, Python classes. And this is the standard for naming classes and we will cover classes in the future. So use Pascal case or Studley caps when it comes to naming classes. So a few things to avoid is things like this, this, underscore capital IS underscore capital U for ugly so don't do it so things like this you know they're annoying to type then they're just annoying to read so that's uh, all words capitalized with an underscore separating a few other notes on naming conventions so private variables are typically prefixed with a leading underscore. So something you want to keep private normally has a leading underscore. And this is typically used in classes and we're not gonna cover that in this uh, episode, but just to know private variables are typically, typically have a leading underscore. And another thing to really avoid when it comes to creating variable names is something like this. So if we just call it something. So you can see here we've got um, double underscores before and after the actual variable name. And although this will work, this is typically reserved for what's called dunder methods or magic methods, uh, which we will cover in a future episode. So it's just something to be aware of try to avoid uh, naming variables like this. If you really need to name a variable um, using one of the Python reserved keywords, you could do something like class, which we know is a reserved keyword and it's not gonna work, and then just add a trailing underscore. Class of 99. So if you really, really Worst case scenario, you've got a variable that you need to name um, using one of the Python reserved keywords, 
then go ahead and add a trailing underscore. But again, try to avoid it if possible. Um, but if it's just worst case scenario, you need to do it. Last resort, uh, one of the conventions is to add the trailing underscore. Um, and the last thing I want to cover is deleting variables. So let's create a new variable here called short lived, give it a value of one. And we delete things in Python using the del keyword followed by the thing we want to delete. So let's go ahead and delete short lived. And then below that, let's try and print it. Print short lived. Let's run this code and let's see what happens. And then we'll talk about it after. So Python variables.py. So here we get this error here, trace back. Uh, print short lived and we get a name error short lived is not defined and that's because we deleted it and Python works by reading your code line by line top to bottom so here it's seeing we've got this short lived variable with a value of one it's then deleting that variable and then we're trying to call the print function and tell it to print short lived but because it's been deleted, Python has no knowledge of this variable because it's now gone. So that's how we delete variables in Python. And that wraps it up for this one. I know this has gone on for a little while, but I want to uh, give you as much information on variables as possible. If you've got any questions or comments, then do feel free to leave them in the comment section below. And feel free to subscribe, plenty more videos coming in this series. So thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.